एवरी वन हाव आई यू ऑल आई नाइस टू मीट यू इन अनदर डे इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल डे इन सिडनी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव हैव अ ब्यूटिफुल पर्सन ही है डॉक्टर लेना डिस विद मी वी आर इन सिडनी इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल पार्क एज वेल सी इट्स अ वट अ ब्यूटिफुल पार्क द रीजन कॉल सिडनी ब्लैक टाउन वेस्टर्न सबर्ब्स एरिया so we are meeting today our friend uh, dr uh, lenard pinto so it's going to be a nice um, topic today so if you are going to watch this interview first time my channel um comment about this one so we are going to start the interview now uh, come lenard this is look very nice uh, nice and beautiful uh, area isn't it uh, lenard uh, yes. Nice to hear the birds singing. Yeah. It's a nice sunset around here. Yeah. Uh, actually, you choose the right location. Uh, you are an environmental scientist, right? Yeah. So it's a <laughs> lot of um, um, birds and uh, flora fauna. Yeah. Yes, lot of uh, native birds. Native birds. Yeah, yes, it's a beautiful setting. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice day too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um so we are going to uh, uh, go into this uh, interview. So so here Leonard is with me. He's a environmental scientist. Uh, he wrote a lot of books. I will talk about that. Everything we are going to talk today. Okay. Classes now. Hi Leonard, how are you? Pretty good, Sri. Good. It's the weather is looking very nice and beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it's a nice day. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hi, Lenard. How are you? Pretty good, Sri. Good, 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 good. Yep. Hi, everyone. Hi, Thanks everyone. for joining in. So we are meeting today, Doctor uh, Lenard Pinto. He's an um, uh, environmental scientist. and we are going to talk to him about lot of things here uh, before i go into details just give a, a quick introduction to dr uh, lenard yep dr lenard is a environmental scientist so he was practicing in uh, sri lanka and then he um moved to i think philippines philippines yes philippines i was in... i was teaching there for about 5 years mm. and i was also in charge of the uh, marine station um and uh, see my initial research was in sri lanka in nigambo lagoon in the mangroves right i worked for about 2 or 3 years doing research for my masters uh, and then when i moved to philippines i mm. continued with the mangroves in the philippines philippines <laughs> yeah, so. but again you are coming in the same place yes. so that's the reason we choose a uh, beautiful uh, mangrove area this is, this is actually a wetland Wet, wetland area wetland and mangroves is a type of a wetland so this is more like a fresh water wetland mm. but uh, performing the same yeah. function so the reason we choose this area is a beautiful environmentally sensitive area has a lot of um, uh, wet basin is here it's part of uh, uh, lenard's uh, field as well yeah so lenard um, is a beautiful day today so we are meeting as we said before we are meeting in sydney australia so we want to talk uh, some uh, topics in uh, what's happening around the world right so a lot of war happening so it's all the reason behind it and things like that so before going to much detail about that so i can um, tell some one more thing uh, dr lenard he wrote a book actually i think you have that book isn't it uh, yes yeah. yeah it's this is a book called being a christian in sri lanka so he wrote about this book so he is a um, uh, political analyst as well yes and uh, so the book is uh, say it sounds like a religious book but uh, the the subtitle is historical political social and religious considerations mm -hmm. so in other words they call it a anthropological approach to religion that's how the authors classified my book as a reference book on anthropology of uh, sri lanka uh -huh. so that's how they classified it anyway <laughs> it's anyway it, it's actually um, really interesting to see uh, you are watching um, the current wars and um, uh, what are the reason behind 
um uh, what are the books uh, you wrote actually so far uh, well this this is uh, one of my books that i have written then i have written a small book on mangroves of sri lanka that's mm -hmm. another one then also i co-authored the uh, wetlands asian wetlands directory right uh, for sri lanka so sri lanka. three of us we wrote that one it's a international publication books but other than that i have about uh, 25 to 30 uh, uh, journal articles mm. on ecology, basically. And uh, uh, they, are, they are some sort of standard uh, papers uh, in uh, standard international journals. Yeah. So those are some of my yeah. uh, publications. So I, I, when I talk to you, I noticed that you are uh, observing or uh, monitoring the situation in Sri Lanka, at, um, current economic situation and uh, in the past what happened political changes and things like that not only in sri lanka uh, around the world what's happening around the world particularly we are going to talk about today uh, what's going to be the topic today um, current wars around the world and religion and the war right? yes what correct. are the uh, yeah. reasons so it's about the religion and war hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is so first uh, first question we are going to ask here uh, especially these uh, Western um, uh, medias, uh, American media, often uh, refers to Hamas-Israel conflict as a war in Holy Land. Hmm? Are the two terms um, compatible? So how do you look into this uh, um, war and um, um, uh, Holy Land? Yeah, uh, that's quite an interesting question mm. because uh, I hear often in... Uh, it's a PBS News, uh, American PBS News, which mm. is broadcast through our SBS. Right. Uh, they are very often, not often, all the time, they refer to Hamas style war as war in the Holy Land. Mm. And when you hear these two terms, mm. you begin to question, <laughs> this is paradoxical. Uh. Right? So is there a paradox? That means are they contradictory in terms? Uh, well, they are contradictory if you think about the Holy Land and the war as two permanent things. But what we know is uh, Holy Land, that concept has been there for a long time and it continues to be. And the other concept of war was come and was go. Mm. You know, they are not permanent. So if you put the two together as uh, permanent things, then uh, uh, it doesn't have any meaning. It loses mm. its meaning. Uh, but if you put them separately, then we can understand something. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, uh, the Holy Land, the so-called Holy Land, uh, is uh, sacred to three main religions, that is Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Mm. Uh, and it is sacred because uh, some of the founders mm. or patriarchs, they have, they have connections with this land. Mm. And there are a lot of sacred sites, so that's why it's, it's called holy. Yeah. Uh, not that the. So who is going to control that um, land? Uh, uh, yes. So that that we, is a, that is that the is, aim of that this. Is, that is the issue, current issue. But when you go back to the history of it, uh, in about uh, 18th century uh, BC, uh, Abraham, he came to uh, this play area called Israel, present area called Israel, and. He started uh, living there, and then his grandson, his name was Jacob. Yeah. And Jacob's name changed into Israel later on. Yeah. And he had twelve children. Yeah. And at one stage they went to Egypt, and when they returned, came back, they uh, divided, or his uh, their descendants were given different parts of uh, the present Israel as well as part of Jordan. Mm. So east and west of uh, the Jordan River uh, given to these people. Uh, and and, uh, and then there were wars from time to time. Say so there was the uh, uh, Babylonian captivity, then there was the uh, Assyrian captivity. So they were taken out of the land. They fought, lost and they were taken out of the land. So there has been wars and then much later you had the, the uh, Islamic invasion which was in 7 uh, AD, uh, 7th century AD. Right? So hmm. then they conquered that land 
then afterwards uh, much later you know we have uh, the crusades coming in in the in the 11th to 13th century they were there for some time then again the muslims getting back uh, and uh, then finally we have the british there and then we have this present situation so the wars have happened they have come and gone and uh, and the people also have been sort of you know moving from one to the another one region to other yeah. uh, and the interesting thing is you see uh, now i said about abraham who started this so who settled there and his descendants and then when uh, christ came jesus jesus was born in bethlehem which is current west bank west bank mm. and then he lived in nazareth he died in jerusalem so it's that's in the first century uh, and then if uh, uh, islam started somewhere in the 7th uh, century uh, ad of 700 mm. and uh, uh, there's a belief that uh, uh, prophet muhammad went up to heaven from the dome of the rock that's a, there's a mosque there mm. which is also close to the jewish old temple what we call the wailing wall is also very close by mm. uh, and you see the uh, jewish people praying there so there are a lot of things around and for the christian there are a lot of sites uh, the uh, sepulchre church the sepulchre church of nativity and get so many and so lot of sites so that's why it is a sacred place to a lot of people uh, so uh, the, the the holy land will continue the wars will come and go so that is the situation mm. and a place uh, say uh, a, a holy place does not lose its holiness if some unholy things happen <laughs> <laughs> so right yeah so there are some unholy things happening and then it will get back to normal so that that yeah, the, that that's that's correct yeah basically if we think the origin they all are from the same origin yes and uh, brothers sort of thing right yes, yes, their yes. origin is same but they divided by religion yes. and they are fighting among them <laughs> yes. so mm? yes that's so abraham is uh, venerated as a patriarch mm. by all by 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 jews by christians as well as by muslims okay. so, so for, for all of them abraham is the father father <laughs> father so brothers are fighting <laughs> fighting, fighting at the end of the day right yes so because of this religion divided not even color right It's, color is something different the religion means so only uh, division between them is religion other uh, than that they are going to be the uh, same origin and the brothers exactly yeah. born to yeah. abraham yeah hmm? yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's very sad the other, other question is if uh, religions are sacred to people don't you think um, that is the religion that has caused this war that's uh, what we are talking about yes, yes. Uh, that's that's also very interesting uh, i think uh, if you look at very carefully it's not the religion but i think the people how they have interpreted the religion mm. so from from the way i see it say religion can be approached by uh, four main levels mm. right and uh, the first one is very simple it's very religion can be very personal mm. right it's like i god or i thou relationship right and that's very good for you for your mind for your problems correct right and so for your own liberation yes those days they didn't have psychiatry so psychology they just went and prayed and uh, uh, reflected and that way they were able to solve all their problems so that's very good uh, then the second level is social religion can operate at social level you have christmas we have like uh, diwali we have vesak uh, and that's very social way of doing things you know not only your religion but in, in religion, you, yeah. you share it with your other colleagues other Correct. friends who are of the same religion yeah. and that's good mm. no harm then comes a little dangerous one level 3 political religion then it becomes uh, say uh, the majority forms the 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 religion of the majority becomes the important area for making decisions and right. then it becomes a little dangerous right so sometimes they will say this is the state religion right that happens in a lot of muslim countries uh, basically st- there's a state religion yeah. and uh, so they they are making use of this religion to uh, come to the power or to rule the region or country correct hmm? that's how they sort of work out uh, they group 
everybody into one and if you are out then bad luck for you. Mm. <laughs> so well, that is a sad thing actually even I was thinking the other day right. So even if you see the globe right. So globe can be divided uh, uh, normally by rivers or some sort of uh, territory like um, hilly area or something like that right. Um, so but now if you see the whole world is uh, uh, divided or uh, country names and countries are based on religion or color or ethnicity or something like that. That looks very sad actually. The human, they form these things to uh, make their life happy, right? To communicate between them, the languages. But finally, it's end up um, dividing the country or people by uh, religion. That's yes, very sad but thing. I think it is sort of uh, uh, going down, decreasing that, you know, our barriers, barriers between communities mm. uh, of the primitive society, they are breaking down slowly because of the travel that we have a lot of uh, opportunities to travel to other countries, other see other people. And the other thing is that tele, uh, the communication, see the media within few minutes. So, you know, so it's happening. happening. Even we for know. example, whatever happened in uh, Sri Lanka or know, with, whether it's a war. Yeah. So next day or even Im immediately, so people living in the other part of the world getting the message now. Yeah. So, so that is one thing. Other thing, as you said, people are right, multicultural countries like Australia, Canada, uh, type of countries, people live together, yes. then they realize, okay, why we are fighting, yeah. right? why we are dividing a country like uh, uh, based on the religion or uh, yeah. ethnic or something like so, that. So, yeah, that's right. So, uh, as people get, uh, uh, get out of their small area of thinking, mm. then they begin to see, well, other side also has something else to offer. And so, uh, people actually uh, begin to think in that way, but at the same time, there is also this internal thing in us to be form a small group. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and, and coming to that point, you know, the, uh, I mentioned the three levels, yeah. and the fourth level, I must say, uh, is uh, more dangerous. Mm. Uh, it's very violent. Yeah. That's where you get uh, this, you know, terrorist groups uh, and uh, say we had uh, uh, holy wars, crusaders was sort of a holy war and more recent times we have more uh, terrorist groups, jihadism and uh, some think that we must convert the whole world into our religion. Correct. So when you have that kind of thinking that is not very good. So that's, 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 uh, that's not in the religion itself. It's something that we have created to help us and use religion for that purpose. So it's, yeah. a, it's a sad thing. Yeah. Uh, as you said, like, uh, see these terrorists, where they name terrorists, right? The Hamas as a terrorist group. But for them, uh, they are freedom fighters or they are, right? You know, that is very difficult to put the barrier where, or how you are not going to name them, right? It's yes. a very difficult. Yes, so that's yes, very that's subjective right. way of thinking, thinking. Uh, from their part. They think that way. And uh, uh, the unfortunate thing is when you begin to think in those terms, it's uh, very difficult. You see, like uh, Israel would be thinking in terms of promised land and chosen people. Mm. Okay? And perhaps uh, uh, these guys, uh, 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 some people in this um, Islam religion might be thinking that uh, uh, these are uh, uh, infidels, they call kafirs, outside. Kafirs, yeah. So that way of thinking is not good. Not yeah. Not so uh, next question, uh, there are uh, references in the sacred text to holy wars, right? Uh, how should we consider the sacred text of religions in the 21st century for peaceful coexistence of diverse communities? Yes. Um, See, if you look at uh, the text in Judaism, uh, Tanakh, that's, yeah. that's uh, their, their Bible, uh, you will see, you know, uh, going to war, help me or God to fight my enemy and that kind of language hmm. is there. And uh, the, the Christians uh, the, also use their Bible. Actually, the, uh, the Christian Bible divided into two main parts called the Old Testament yep. before Jesus and New Testament after Jesus. So, the Old Testament is exactly like 
the the Jewish Bible, but slight differences. So there you see this concept. But the thing is, uh, in Christian teaching, they underplay that kind of language. They say that is not appropriate for the mm. person. Mm. And uh, in in Holy Quran mm. and also in Hadith, that's another book uh, of, that Muslim people use. There, there's mention of this. Uh, I mentioned about kafir, that is, you know, infidels. They are outside, convert them uh, and. Uh, jihadism is uh, just very bad. In the name of God, you can kill people and you go to heaven. Yeah. You become a martyr. Yeah. So those concepts uh, are outdated. They were, say, we use in social science a concept called paradigm. Paradigm mm -hmm. means the way people think at a particular time. Mm -hmm. so, and the paradigm keeps on changing. Right. We call it time paradigm time. shift. Right. So at that time, People are fighting with each other and uh, all sorts of, you know, uh, ways of thinking. So that was a different paradigm. Now the paradigm has changed. Uh, we have the United Nations. We have Olympic Games. You know, we are all trying people to, to unite together and to unite understand together. each other. Each other, and, mm. and 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 we have common values, mm. human rights, and freedom, and all these concepts have come in, and. Uh, so we have to sort of, you know, think in a different way. And this is something that I came across in, in Bible studies. They are saying this concept, two, two uh, concepts. One is exegesis. The other is hermeneutics. Now, they say when you read the Bible or any old literature, uh, sacred literature, exegesis is how you interpret at that time. Right, so certain things that are there, you have to interpret in terms of what happened then in their society. And the second one is very important. Hermeneutics means how you interpret it in the present time. So uh, what you interpret it at that time is not the meaning that you should use it. Yeah, now. yeah, correct, correct. When you say this one, um, so I can uh, relate to some of the topics, right? Even in the current war, Israel and. Um, uh, have what's happening there, say war crime, like the, the killing the children is a big um, crime, isn't it? Yes. So it's it's related to that pra, um, paradigm, right? Yes, it's, paradigm. It's yes. paradigm. Yes. Uh, the current war is uh, very monitored. It's There is a limit. Uh, yes. What you can do, what you can't do in a war yes. between the yes. uh, countries. Okay? Yes, that is correct. So yes. That is so, um, and then the thing is, when there is a conflict, the conflict has to be resolved. And uh, now in the, in the present war, we have about 134 people, I think, hostages still with Hamas. Correct. So they have to come out and uh, uh, they have to be saved. Mm. And at the same time, Israel goes and bombs there. And mm. uh, uh, Americans have been telling the Israelis, uh, make sure that you avoid uh, or reduce uh, casualties, civilian casualties. So that's the advice that's coming. And of course, children try to avoid. So it's very difficult in situation in a war situation. But uh, if people sit together and discuss, <laughs> everything will be yeah, simple. definitely, definitely. That's the understanding between communities, right? Yes. So uh, viola uh, brothers, so same um, species like human. Right? Yes. So we can understand. Yes. We can um, talk each other. Right. Yes. We can uh, see uh, your perspective uh, from my point of view. Right. How you are thinking. What are the hmm, uh, your beliefs? And we have to respect that one. Yes. So especially the multicultural countries like Australia. Right. See in this park. Then we walk from here to where the car park to here. How many different ethnic people are living here? Right. Walking around here. Right. So religious people, religious belief, and uh, the countries like these they um, welcoming everyone and uh, uh, letting them to letting us to uh, practice our beliefs and our religion uh, whatever right communities right living their own uh, group of things right so still we are respecting other people and other these are in our workplace see how many different cultural people different uh, believing people and uh, different colored people are working together that's how um, we are it's an imaginary world maybe but that's what we want to see. So the next question is going to be a similar sort of thing, right? You and me are from the 
uh, same uh, area and we uh, we watch a big uh, war uh, went for in sri lanka for the last uh, 26 30 26 years, years or yeah, more right years. 30 years or more so like um, hamas israel war we had a big war in sri lanka also had a big war went so long uh, how can we bring about peace and harmony in a country like uh, multi ethnic and multi religious communities living uh, like country like sri lanka so what is your opinion on that one yes uh, see i think uh, the rights of each individual should be respected mm. and uh, 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 we had in sri lanka for example you no know, ethnic religious conflicts yeah uh, same like uh, hamas and uh, uh, israel Same. conflict and uh, uh, luckily they have sort of you know control it this time mm. in the last war there were uh, israel muslim countries all joined together and fighting with israel yeah. uh, so they can uh, go out of control yeah. uh, now uh, the way is first thing is you know uh, you, the way you think has to change uh, the way the individual thinks about the others uh, in other words to think about the difference the diversity in the community and accept them see, see don't sort of think about your standards as the standard for everybody correct so each person is different and uh, each person has his own ways you know uh, not only uh, the individuality, but also with the community, like religious group or uh, ethnic group, there are differences. So we have to accept them. Yep. And uh, so that's where, I think that's where the real religion comes in, to accept the other person, mm. right? To care for the other person's needs, uh, not to think about myself only, my way is the correct way. So, so that is that level. Then comes a little more important area, uh, the social and political level. So, socially also we must recognize the other groups. And that's that way we can reduce this difference between the people. Then uh, the, the political part of it is is very dangerous. See, right? Say, if you uh, put a, uh, a religion, a religious state, then it becomes difficult because you exclude the other people. Mm, mm. Right? Say, good example is Say India. Mm. India, you have about 78 Hindus. Yeah. But it's a secular state. Yeah. Right? So the religion is there. Hinduism is there at the base. But you don't make it something uh, that this is the way people should do things. Everybody should follow this. Uh, no. no. So India has not done that because you had some clever people like uh, Gandhi, Nehru. Uh, Ambedkar and mm. all those people who were thinking at that time, uh, they had the wisdom to say, if we put religion, we'll have problems. So they put it secular. Uh, whereas we in Sri Lanka, we have about 70% Buddhists and mm. Sri Lanka is a Buddhist state and we have a lot of uh, problems with that. So that is that level. Then education. Uh, education, government should sort of uh, encourage education to recognize the other people, mm. right? And uh, then you have the, some other legislations associated with that, uh, like discrimination and all that we have here, anti-discrimination laws, which will which prevents people from uh, uh, criticizing and abusing the minorities. No, that doesn't happen. So uh, we, the government has that responsibility to do it. And also, the government can use media. Media is a strong tool. The media, they can use, uh, you know, in stories, in drama, in songs, and symbols. I want to mention Correct. that. The symbols are very important that you can uh, show to the people. And uh, a symbol that comes to my mind, and that is in my book, page 81. And if you go there, you see the, the, the two flags I have shown, Sri Lankan flag and the Indian flag. Now, in the Sri Lankan flag, you see the big area, the maroon area is represents Buddhist community. Yep. Then you have saffron is Hindu and green is Muslim. And uh, uh, so these are different uh, religious wise. In fact, at, what, at one stage, they thought uh, 
Muslims are part of uh, Tamils because yeah. they speak Tamil. Uh, and Muslims said, no, we are a different ethnic group. And when they were working out this uh, flag, the committee won, uh, uh, showed in one of the drawings the saffron, uh, saffron or the minorities touching the majority, the maroon color. Uh, but then some opposed. They said, no, we want to have a strip between these two. Muslims and Hindus, they can meet together, but we are separate. Yeah, so that kind of thing. But uh, Christians had no place because Christians didn't want to recognize as ethnic group. Now, uh, now the flag shows unity in diversity, which is good. Right? Now we go to Indian flag. Now in the, in the Indian flag, you have the similar two colors. Mm. The saffron is not Hindus. Mm. Saffron is uh, earth. Green is not Muslim. Green is environment and white is peace. And most interestingly, they landed the symbol of King Asoka, Buddhist king. Right? I expect to see Shiva's trident. <laughs> but what, what we have is uh, uh, something. Buddhist, uh, yeah. and, and the Buddhists are about 0.7% in India. India. <laughs> right? So, now, if you analyze the flag, what you see is uh, it's completely different from the Sri Lankan concept. I would call it uh, unity that transcends diversity. So it goes even beyond the, that uh, uh, having different parts put in together. That kind of concept, they have something that uh, transcends. So in other words, we are, say, although we are different, mm -hmm. We are all one yeah. because we are in the same environment, Correct. we are in the same earth, we breathe Correct. the same air. And why do you want to call this different, different groups? Correct. Right? So, <laughs> so that's the concept that, you know, I, I thought it's a, it's a good yeah, concept. It's, I sometimes think like animals, right? They're not going to uh, differentiate whether what religion his person is um, <laughs> practicing and what color is this per, uh, person or what uh, language this person talk about uh, next um, animal right so uh, other than human right? yes so same like that why i don't know why we have this many uh, differences in people right it's it's unnecessary unnecessary right just everyone they need some uh, their language to talk communicate each other right they have to have their own area to practice uh, religion or um, that sort of thing but we don't need to fight each other just respect and understand their mm, beliefs and that's it's a good point actually it's a good point uh, about it today so I really appreciated your time so it's a lot of things to talk about this especially about our motherland sri lanka so we like to see uh, people living together right happily living together it's a beautiful um, language Sinhalese, Tamils, uh, and the, uh, the religion practicing is so beautiful. Like, as you said, uh, Buddhism is uh, one of the best um, uh, religion, right? Christianity, Hinduism, uh, Islam, right? All four religions are there, right? They, if they are following what their religion is saying, actually, there, there is no need to be fight each other. Mm? It's, uh, they can live happily in that land. It's a beautiful land. If you see, uh, if you travel around the world, you will appreciate that uh, land, how beautiful the people, even, even even here, when you see the other community, people can identify Sri Lankan simply because of their smile on their face and the way they communicate each other, things like that, right? So we like to see that one, right? That uh, continuing uh, the harmony between the communities. It's a good point uh, you brought it up today. I really appreciate it. You want to finalize this uh, conversation? Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share some of my uh, ideas and what I have written in my book uh, with you and with the other audience. And uh, uh, as you said, uh, say we in, in our country or we in our region, uh, we have uh, very high uh, values. Mm. And these, uh, when I say high values, these are Okay. Okay. Thanks very much, okay. Leonard. Thank you. So we have to go now. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. Thanks for joining in. Uh, we will see you in another um, Thank day. You. Okay. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Okay. So.